They have survived here for hundreds of thousands of years. Komodo dragons, with a venomous bite, live here on just a handful of small islands in Indonesia. Arriving at Komodo Island, home of the world's largest lizards. The only place you'll find these dragons anywhere in the world. Incredible, most prehistoric scenes here. The villagers that live amongst the dragons believe they're spiritually and physically related to them. Soalnya kembar tadi ada hubung darah, hubung antara batin manusia dengan binatang komodo. This human dragon relationship may be all about to change. An increasing number of visitors now flock here to see this iconic species. Welcome. And this man, the powerful governor of the region, wants to close Komodo Island to mass tourism and expel the villagers, making the island a home only for the dragons. Di sana itu tidak ada human right, yang ada animal right. Jadi kalau tidak animal right, ya, yang dilindungi itu Komodo. Yang di sana kan tidak di manusia tidak dilindungi. There's just one village here on Komodo Island, home to around 2,000 people. And they have a centuries-old history with the dragons. The villagers tell the story of a princess who lived on Komodo, whom people call Putri Naga, or Dragon Princess. She married a man named Nago and bore him twins. One was a baby boy and the other a baby dragon. Satu satu melahirkan dia namanya sebaik dia tuh hanya makannya daging komodo ini jadi dia itu turun di bawah tanah sering kejar ayam penduduk akhirnya uh, penduduk itu ngomong ngomel dia oh katanya sebaik ini dia bilang tuh sering curi ayam akhirnya si mamanya ini marah Sebaik dia bilang tuh, kamu jangan curi orang punya ayam. Itu tetangga itu marah. Akhirnya dia sudah mulai masuk hutang dia. Dia tetap kembali tengok mamanya dengan dengan kawannya itu. Komodo dragons reach 10 feet in length and can weigh upwards of 300 pounds. They have shark-like teeth and poisonous venom that can kill a person within hours of a bite a powerful tail that can bring down any prey. But the community here says they haven't lived in fear. Soalnya kembar tadi ada hubung darah, hubung antara batin manusia dengan binatang komodo. Kalau aslinya orang komodo, dia tidak ganggu, tidak apa-apa. While still being very rare, there are unprovoked attacks by the Komodo dragons. There are no official records, but the National Park authorities say there have been 15 attacks in the last 10 years. Just one that resulted in the death of a human. Tahi, a farmer, shows me where he was sleeping in what used to be his house here amongst his fruit trees when he was attacked. Saya bangun lari, lari dia melompat ga ini, ya dia tarik ke di bawah. Akhirnya saya ikut karena besar dia, besar dia bukan kecil. Akhirnya saya ambil kayu ada satu depa, saya tumbuk di belakangnya itu maka dia lari. Villagers who heard him screaming put him on a boat and rushed him to hospital. He shows me his scars from the bite marks, 15 in total. Jadi setelah itu bapa enggak takut ke hutan lagi? Ya masih. But he has moved his house closer to the others along the shore. The Komodo Island community insists that before their village became part of the National Park in 1980, their relationship with the dragons was much friendlier. Pernah dulu tu tidur dengan manusia dia. 
tidur dengan anak kecil. Ya. Tidak ada apa-apa. Begitu paginya dia keluar sendiri. Karena dulu tuh orang Komodo sering apa? Uh, sering uh, berburu. Berburu tuh dagingnya, kulitnya dengan kakinya tuh kepalanya kasih Komodo. Ya. Maka dia kenyang. Sekarang tidak kita masukkan sama Taman Nasional itu enggak ada lagi. Enggak ada lagi. Australian academics released a report last year that found the dragons do better, they're bigger and heavier when living around humans because of access to food scraps. But Komodo dragons are now listed as vulnerable to extinction and hunting of the dragon's prey is outlawed in this place that's now a world heritage area. Wow. <laughs> Most of Komodo National Park is actually ocean, 70% of it. And then there's five main islands like this one that are dotted amongst the sea. And that makes it quite a hard national park for the authorities to monitor what's going on here. It's rangers like Stephen's job to protect the park. Ancamannya orang berburu rusa. Untuk di lautnya, uh, Kadang nelayan juga menggunakan alat yang tidak ramah lingkungan, terus menggunakan potasium dan bom. Ya, ada berita apa? Ya. Dan kalau itu terus terjadi, seperti apa dampaknya? Ya, yang jelas dampaknya uh, merusak karang, terus untuk perkembang baik ikan itu sudah pasti tidak dapat untuk anak cucu kita nantinya. Begitu juga kalau di darat, kalau perburuan rusak yang pasti komodo juga sudah langka dan mati. Jadi tidak akan ada untuk uh, penerusnya. The villagers insist they have stopped hunting and they don't feed the komodos anymore. Now it's the dragons that are providing for this community. It's 7 a.m. and as the park opens, the tourists begin to arrive. Today, a cruise ship carrying more than 3,000 people has docked in the bay and the visitors begin to pull ashore. Wow, it's already really busy here. Yes. Abdul Ghaffur Qasim is one of the many local guides from the Komodo community waiting for them. I mean, this is where you get your livelihood from, isn't it? Yeah, it's like they give me life. Also like the job like that. It's like the tourists are coming for the see the Komodo dragon, they bring the money for the people. In 2010, just under 50,000 people visited the Komodo National Park. That jumped to nearly 300,000 last year. Oh. Indonesia has some of Southeast Asia's most beautiful and largely undiscovered tourist destinations. It's something the central government wants to change. And Komodo National Park, just over an hour east by plane from the tourist hub of Bali, is one of the areas the central government is now heavily promoting. And Labuan Bajo, the gateway to the national park, is a city undergoing significant change. This used to be a very sleepy fishing village when I visited over 10 years ago. Now it's a hive of building activity. This is advertised as being a first-class marina. Many big brand names are already buying up space here. The number of tourists visiting has doubled in the last five years. The number is still relatively low compared to neighbouring Bali. But there's a real atmosphere here of this place being on the edge of a tourism boom. With increased interest and money now coming in, a tussle for control of the park has broken out between the central and local government. A battle for Dragonland. Welcome. This man, the local governor, has a dramatic vision for Komodo Island, the land of the dragons. He's demanding the island be closed to all visitors for a year in 2020 and then become an exclusive place for just a handful of wealthy people. Desa di sana harusnya tidak boleh. Karena itu 
kami akan berencana untuk memindahkan mereka agar ke depan di pulau itu tidak lagi ada ada manusia dan kita membuat wild komodo. So this will involve moving a whole community from the island of Komodo. There will surely be resistance to that. Ya, memang memindahkan orang itu tidak mudah, tetapi untuk visi ke depan itu tidak ada pilihan. Saya melihat bahwa hari ini Komodo belum mendapatkan perhatian serius. Penutupan satu tahun itu adalah cara terbaik untuk kita bangun kembali Pulau Komodo sebagai habitat Komodo. After that, it will cost a lot more than the few dollars you pay now to enter the park. The governor is proposing a 1,000 US dollar entrance fee for visitors. But the vast majority of tourists visit just two main areas that make up around 4% of the land area of the whole national park. And researchers who've been monitoring the Komodo population since 2002 say there is no need for alarm. The dragon population is stable and so too their primary prey. The final decision over the future of the park lies a thousand kilometers away in the capital, Jakarta. Under pressure from the regional governor, a review of the park's management is now taking place. Some of the bigger tour operators here agree controls need to be put in place if the tourism boom is to be sustainable. That, that can help us for uh, maintain the sustainability. And then also from the local government, they need to strict uh, the rules for the tour operator, hotel, resort, dive center. They need to be strict for uh, take care of the sustainability. But 70% of the community that lives on Komodo and nearby Rincha Island now survive of the tourist trade. And the idea of less people coming is a disaster to many. And the villagers are now confused and worried about their future. Kami kan mau dipindahkan juga kan tidak mau harus memindah di mana dan juga kan kami tidak mengganggu habitat hewan komodo kami juga tidak juga membunuh seandainya kami membunuh mak gubernur bisa saja memindahkan kami kami kan tidak membunuh kami juga bisa melestarikan hewan komodo kan juga bisa tidak kami tidak harus pindah juga kan dari desa komodo. Her father Haji Amin says the government tried to move them before when the park was created and claims the dragons tried to come with them. Orang Komodo gelisah, banyak berenang kemana-mana aja, karena orang Komodo gelisah dia. Nah, maka hubungannya erat sekali antara manusianya dengan orang binatangnya tu. Ya, maka apa yang kita bilang itu dari nenek moyang memang kita di sini. Ya, kita tetap mempertahankan. This is a battle for control and a debate over what sustainable tourism should look like in this unique landscape and who should benefit from it.